young and beautiful female prosecutor was alone on the street, getting drunk. Passing by, Wang was intrigued by the sight. But after he took his seat, he realized the news of Zhang's wrongful imprisonment was soon learned by the media. As the presiding judge, Eun Su naturally became a target. The key evidence was given to him by Mr. Huang. So Eun Su thought that the chief and Huang were working together. She's trying to get herself killed. Huang was speechless by this little girl. He told Eun Su not to get ahead of herself. Why would the chief go to such lengths to set you up? A little trainee? He got up and left without thinking about Eun Su. But on her way out, Eun Su said something to herself, but Huang couldn't figure it out. When he got home, he was still thinking about Eun Su's words. But the next day, Huang made a decision that surprised everyone. He volunteered to be interviewed. He took all the blame on himself and released the video of the murderer misleading them. The Huang made a promise in front of everyone to catch the killer within two months. After the operation, Huang was instantly on the hit list. And that's exactly what he wanted. To use the media to bring attention to this case so that no one would obstruct his investigation. But what he did caused strong resentment within the prosecutor's office. The minister gave him a scolding his co-workers have isolated Huang. Only Eun Su sneaked over. She thanked Huang for clearing her name. But while they were talking, Yoon Jin made a phone call. It turns out that Huang and Yoon Jin have just found Park Moo Sung's mother. According to his recollection, the night before Park Moo Sung's murder, someone called him and asked him out for a meeting. After he came back, Park Moo Sung hid in his room. He never came out again. And Yoon Jin found out that he made the call from the prosecutor's office where Huang is. After hanging up the phone, Huang immediately found the landline. But when they tried to find out who made the call, the administrator told them that the data had passed its expiration date. This news disappointed Huang, but he did not give up then he searched the surveillance cameras near Park's house that night. He found a clue. Park Moo Sung threw away a cup of soy milk on his way home. There was a rabbit logo printed on the cup. Park Moo Sung's round trip took 32 minutes. So the furthest distance he traveled one way wouldn't be more than 16 minutes one way. Huang quickly found the milk tea store with the rabbit logo. The surveillance data of that day was deleted. Luckily, the clerk who was on duty at that time still remembered Park Moo Sung because he had an argument with someone that day. But when Huang took out the photos of Lee Chong Jun and Seo Dong Jae and asked him to recognize them, the clerk immediately dismissed them. Instead, he pointed to another person in the photo. The coroner is examining the body. The woman has miraculously come back to life. The police at the scene are in a state of chaos. However, when they passed by Huang's side, he noticed a detail the woman's neck showed traces of electric shock. The woman was soon taken to the hospital in an ambulance. Two murders in a row within a month. Due to the pressure of public, the police immediately formed a special investigation team. That night, the students who were at the scene of the crime were all ruled out as suspects, not to mention the fact that he leaked it to others. The boss's wife is also unlucky. She was forced to close the door. Even she got into trouble. On the other hand, Wong found his fingernails near Inuyasha's house. That means the murderer knew where Inuyasha's house was. There are only a few people who know about Inu Yi Ae's existence. Dong Ja Su went to arrest her only after Lee Chang Jun's favor. One person came to mind. He's trying to find out. Huang called up the surveillance camera that was following Seo Dong Ja that day. Sure enough, when they walked out of the building, they were followed by someone else. It was Eun Su, the prosecutor. Since the last time I found out, Eun Su was the last person Park Moo Sung saw before he died. Huang has been watching his every move. And he also realized Unsu's height is similar to the one standing by the window in the video. But a little girl. Can a little girl really kill a grown man with three knives? How did he electrocute Chun Min Yul and then move to Park Moo Sung's house? To test Unsu, Huang asked her to deliver a stack of documents. But Unsu could pick it up several times. It seems that with her strength, he can't do the physical work of killing. But there's another possibility Unseo has a helper. With this doubt Huang found Unsu's parents, but they broke up a long time ago. Unsu's mother thought Huang was interested in her daughter. This scared Huang. He quickly found an excuse to leave. But when he returned to the prosecutor's office, he heard some news. His fingerprints were found on the murder weapon. All the evidence pointed to Huang as the murderer. But Huang wasn't surprised at all. He asked Li Chang Jun if he was the one who did the quota case. Because the biggest beneficiary is Li Chang Jun, whom he once entertained. In the face of Huang's questioning, Li Chang Jun finally told the truth. In fact, nothing happened between him and Quan Minah that day, because he knew it was a trap. Li Chang Jun was so angry with him. You can insult my body, 
But you can't insult my character Huang is only emotionally abrasive, but he's not brainless. On the other side, John Min Un's name is not John Min Un at all. Her name is Kim Sunya, and she went to school with Park Mu Sung's son. Un Su came to Huang's office late at night. She confessed that she had met Park Mu Sung the night before he died. But the reason he went to see Park Mu Sung was to get him to clean up his father's name. It turns out Un Su's father was framed for embezzlement a few years ago. Park Mu Sung was the one who provided the money. When Park Wu Sung mocked him to his face, Un Su knew that Huang suspected him, but he really didn't kill him. Only if Park Wu Sung lies. To clear his father's name, Huang didn't trust her explanation. Until the killer is caught, no one is off the hook. After sending Un Su away, Huang received a copy of the surveillance it shows. Hyun Min Ah entered Lee Chang Jun's room and stole it. It took a total of 13 minutes. It's hard to prove Lee Chang Jun's claim that nothing happened between them. And Huang realized something else. Hyun Min Ah was smiling at someone at the end of the surveillance. It's obvious that they know each other. Who is this person? Huang was ready to leave work with his head full of questions. But when he got into the elevator, he bumped into Su Dong's eye. As soon as he entered the elevator, Huang smelled a woman's perfume. When he saw the mask in Su Dongzai's pocket, Huang realized immediately, Su Dongzai must have covered his face to meet a woman. After leaving the office, Huang immediately went to the perfume store. He met Yun Jin there. After learning about Huang's idea, Yun Jin took her to the most perfumed place in the city. Yo Dongja's perfume is the same as the boss's wife's. Under the coercion of the two men, the boss's wife told the truth. That day, the boss's wife couldn't stand Su Dongzai's pestering. She secretly told him the address of John Min Yu's house. But Seo Dongja came back after realizing that she ran away. The boss's wife was afraid of getting into trouble. That's why she didn't say anything. But no matter what, Seo Dong J could not get away with it. On their way back, Huang was attracted by the music on the street. He suddenly remembered. That was the song he heard. It was the ringtone of Seo Dongja's cell phone. The two of them rushed back to the prosecutor's office. They ran into Seo Dongja who was on his way out. Huang immediately took out his phone and dialed him. This is a cell phone that can solve the mystery of serial murders. But the man didn't intend to hand it over. He smashed it into the corner of the sofa after making sure the phone was completely destroyed. The man rewrapped it and put it in his jacket pocket. After doing so, the man immediately drove to the bridge. But just as he was about to throw the phone into the river, but there was a shout from behind him it turns out ever since he knew that the cell phone was on Seo Dong Jae's body. Yoon Jin and the others have been watching him secretly. Even Huang and Eun Su even went to his office to look for it. Seo Dong Jae also realized someone went through his office. He wanted to destroy the evidence because he was afraid of being exposed. But he was stopped by Yoon Jin who was following him. Seo Dong Jae immediately put his cell phone on the floor. After making sure it's safe, Yoon Jin carefully picked up the cell phone on the ground. But it's not a cell phone at all. It was a pack of cigarettes. Seo Dong Jae, who succeeded in his plan, laughed at Young Jin. He scolded her. Yoon Jin, who knew she was in the wrong, couldn't do anything about it. She could only bow her head and apologize. After teaching Yoon Jin a lesson, Seo Dong Jae drove away in his car. Not long after, he turned into a small road. But when he was about to throw his cell phone into the river, behind him came another cry of alarm. Seo Dong Jae quickly looked back but he didn't find anything unusual. Then he threw the cell phone into the water. Soon after, Huang drove to the river. They were recovering the cell phone that Seo Dong Jae had just thrown away. It turns out that they expected that Seo Dong Jae is not so easy to deal with. So they arranged two people to follow him. It didn't take long Yoon Jin fished out the cell phone. They put her in an evidence bag and prepared to take it back for identification. After returning to the police station, Yoon Jin was ready to rest after a long day. But then the lights in the office were suddenly turned off. Yoon Jin sensed something wrong and got up immediately to check. But there was no one else in the empty office. She cautiously walked towards the wall. Suddenly, she felt a coldness. It was just a nightmare. After waking up, Yoon Jin immediately called the hospital. But she realized that the caller's phone was always on hold. At the same time, a woman in dark green high heels slowly pushed open the door of the hospital room. She came to Quan Minyul's bed step by step. She slowly removed the oxygen mask from her face. Then she covered her face with a pillow. The nurse immediately ran to the hospital room. Luckily, she's fine. The nurse was so relieved. She put the oxygen mask back on. However, after finishing everything, the nurse suddenly heard the sound of a door opening. This is a cell phone that can bring the dead back to life. 
during the day, the man threw it into the river. At night, he reappeared in the man's hands. During the day the cell phone he threw away wasn't John Mingux at all. He realized there was someone else following him. That's why he played along with the others. He came to Park Musung's house in the middle of the night. He wanted to plant the blame on Park. Park Musung's son, who had a crush on John Min Ah, but he didn't realize. There was someone who saw through it all. Huang realized that Seo Dongja had more than one cell phone. A man with two cell phones. Seo Dongja knew that Huang had gone through his office. So he wouldn't take out his real cell phone, so easily soon Huang interrogated Dong Jie. Although Dong Jie was caught red-handed. But he denied that he was the murderer he found the cell phone near John Minyul's house. He arrived 20 minutes before Huang. But even so, he was still one step behind. So he drove down the alley and waited. That's where he found John's cell phone. And that night, he knew Mrs. John's address. He reported it to someone. That's Mr. Lee Chang Jun, the prosecutor general. Seo Dongja's car recorder and phone records prove that what he said was true. The investigation immediately turned to Lee Chang Jun. However, Seo Dongja, who had just been cleared of suspicion, he didn't have time to breathe a sigh of relief. He received a text message from Unsu. It turns out that the person who knew that day that Seo Dongja went to look for the full quota. In addition to Huang, Unsu was also there. After confirming the surveillance, Seo Dongja immediately drove to the meeting place. As soon as he met him, he asked Eun-soo what she saw, but Eun-soo didn't answer him. Instead,